Getting ready to glue the two halves of the plane together and I'll probably use some welders glue where I've already used welders like right here and along here near the rudder and then for the rest of the fuselage I'm going to use this supplied contact cement that came with the plane and I'm going to put this stuff on and let it get tacky and then apply this other half. Uh, so let's go and do it, but it'll be in time lapse. So there it is all clamped together and you saw I used some frog tape to bind parts of the fuselage and the rest is just furniture clamps and other kinds of clamps. Alright, uh, both halves of the fuselage are now glued together and if we look in the top here we can see the Arju Pilot Mega 2.6 right in the center here and the Ublox GPS compass module right in front of that and the wing will go on top of here. Just checking one thing Uncle Deke had me worried that the wing spar here might be over the top of the GPS and blocking signal but it looks like we're okay because the GPS compass module is way in the front here and the wing spar is way back here over the Arju pilot so it doesn't look like there's going to be a problem so I'll probably just keep the GPS right where it is. I've just got the plane sitting in this miter saw box right here that John was making. I don't know where she's at, but I might have saw her down at Lowe's. Also, I've cut a hatch right here and used some pin hinges on one side and some packing tape on the other just to hold it shut. And inside there, you can see the power module. And what I've done is put some tie wraps through some Velcro, stuck the Velcro on here, and then tie wrap down the power module. And now that provides me some strain relief when I go to grab the power plug here, and it doesn't move these wires that go to the Arju pilot. So the Arju pilot is supplying power to the receiver, and uh, it gets it from this power module. It also supplies power to the U-Blocks compass module right here to the telemetry radio which is back here. Here's the plug for that. So those are the things that the R2 pilot will be powering and it all comes from this power module so we don't want that to come loose. Okay so now I'm kind of working on the elevator here on the horizontal stabilizer and I've glued on this piece of wood that came with the kit and that's to put two screws through so you can fasten it right here on the tail. And to hinge the elevator I decided to use some pin hinges which look like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and do like I did this one. I slotted it in with a Zacto knife and pressed it in there and I'm going to do the same thing into the elevator and there's going to be five of them. One in the middle one on each end and then one between the end and the middle on each side so that's five and I'll just probably glue them in with some CA or my favorite welders glue so there is the elevator with pin hinges five pin hinges and the horn glued on well before I mount everything on the video pod I need to backtrack a little bit a couple of my viewers have suggested that I use a UBEC or UBEC and instead of the built-in BEC on the ESC to uh, power my APM. So I've got this one from ReadyMade RC and it's supposed to be a low RF noise UBEC and it outputs 5 amps, it's selectable 
between five and six uh, with this jumper over here but I'm just going to be using five volts obviously so I'm going to mount this so that it attaches right after the power module right here in other words the battery will be attached here and my UBEC will be attached over here and then it will plug into the Arju pilot at the back end here and supply power. As far as the ESC wires go, they recommend just using the signal wire, the white or yellow wire, and disconnect the ground and the uh, power wire to the ESC because this is going to be supplying the ground and the power. And that's supposed to, according to uh, Coyote FPV, that's supposed to prevent some ground looping that you get through the ESC. So I'm going to give this a try and see what happens. First thing I'm going to do is add a tap here to the output voltage on the UBEC so that in case I have to get some voltage for my pan tilt setup, I can use this extra tap. And this one's the one that's going to go to the Arju pilot. So let's solder that on. So there's the tap for the pan tilt voltage soldered on there. Pretty good joint I guess. Could be better but I don't want to lift the edges on the board. Next I'm going to solder the two input wires from the UBEC onto these out wires from the power module right here. Now I know I could have made up some sort of a connector or adapter to go between here and the ESC and then had this plugged into that. But I want to reduce the number of these XT plugs because each, each one of these plugs has some resistance and I don't want to start stacking them up. So I'm going to solder directly to these wires. Okay, so there's my solder joints and I've got a battery plugged in and there's the UBIC right there powered up. So it looks like it's working. I used regular electrical tape on these connections and I'll probably just go ahead and put liquid electrical tape back here since these connections are so close together. Well, liquid electrical tape is messy stuff and it has a pretty bad smell but there it is right there and now I gotta let it dry. So here is the UBIC mounted inside in its happy home here and it's got the extra power tap coming off in case I want to use that for the pan tilt and then the main power wires are coming up through here and plugging in the top here. Here's the two wires going into an empty slot in the power bus for the APM right here. And then as far as the ESC goes, it now just has this one yellow wire. So the ESC ground and voltage aren't connected anymore. They're right here. I just took the yellow wire out put it into a new plug and just plugged it in the bus right here. That's better lighting. So there it is right there plugged in the bus all by itself on pin 3 for the ESC. Whereas the UBEC is plugged over here on an empty slot just to supply power and ground right there. Of course they say it could get away without the ground but it's not necessary to take it off on that. I only took the ground off and the power off on the ESC. Now the question is does the throttle still work with only one wire, a signal wire, going to the ESC? I know the servos are working, I can hear them. So let's go over here to the radio and we'll see if the motor runs. So the throttle still works. Oh, I just wanted to mention one thing. You can see I do have a GPS lock and we're down in the basement. This is underneath the house so even through all of that the uh, U-Blox is still picking up enough satellites to get a GPS lock. I've also added a little, uh, I don't know if you can see it right here, but this is a little piece of plexiglass so I'm kind of making a light pipe. I poke some plexiglass through the foam and it goes over in front of the U-blocks in this area and just picks up the light 
and then pipes it out here to the side of the plane. So even if I have the wing on, I'll be able to see if I've got the blinking blue GPS lock light. The red just means power. I just want to say thanks to uh, Coyote FPV for telling me about how to avoid the ground loop by using a U-Bec in, in the proper wiring. And also want to say thanks to Dick Gibson for suggesting to use a U-Bec in the first place. And this video is getting kind of long, as usual. I wanted to get into building the video pod and putting all that together, but I guess I'll have to do that in the next video. So uh, we'll get back to that, and we'll see you on the tube later on for the video pod build. Mm -hmm.